Welcome to Many Messages. I'm Brother James, and this is Easter and Communion. Okay, so today is a little different. It's Easter Sunday, uh, April 12, 2020, and I'm actually sitting here with my family this time. It's not just me. There's my wife, Carissa, my oldest daughter, Addison, and my youngest daughter, Lillian. Hi. Hello. Hello. So y'all get to know that you're enjoying this message, and they get to hear it live. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know things are a little different. We are in the middle of a pandemic so we're all experiencing easter a little different this year than normal and we're also in a tornado morning watch we're in severe weather yes uh so it's very different (laughs) we're actually really close to our safe place we are um so but it reminds me that this year 2020 marks 400 years this coming November since the Mayflower landed at Plymouth Rock. So that's a little neat tidbit, and it's very special for us because we actually have an ancestor who was on that boat. And the big significance of the Mayflower is they're the first group of immigrants coming over from the old world to the new world who established their own form of government because they thought they were lost. So... That's pretty neat that we're 400 years away from that. At the same time, where we're going at in Scripture today, the Hebrew people were 400 years in a foreign land. And they were facing a much different situation, but kind of the same also, in that they were being slaves to their situation and held back and oppressed by the situation they were in much like we're held back and oppressed in the way that we're not free to move about the way that we normally do because of the pandemic that's going on the COVID-19 pandemic that's going on now so I thought it was a pretty neat correlation so I'm going to scripture in Exodus chapter 12 and I'm going to start in verse 14 and I want to talk about what was going on with the Hebrew uh, verse 13 I'm sorry I want to talk about what was going on with the Hebrew people at the time they Moses had been sent back to the Hebrew people back to Egypt by God to bring God's people out of this situation that they had been in for 400 years And so, and so we have gone through all the other plagues and we've come down to the last one and it's the death of the firstborn is what's about to happen. But God gives them a promise that if the Hebrew people would lock themselves in their house after slaughtering a sacrificial lamb, eating that meal together, take the blood of that lamb and cover the door of their house. And in Scripture it says, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Today is Easter for us Christians, and we understand that we are covered under the blood of the Lamb of God. We are under His protection in much the same way that the Hebrew people were under the protection of of the sign of the blood of the lamb during this time. And so I thought it was a pretty neat correlation that I wanted to bring to everybody and bring to light that under the blood of Jesus Christ, we found find our salvation from the death of sin. Much as the Hebrew people under the blood of the sacrificial lamb were saved from the death of the curse of, against the firstborn of Egypt. So... I thought it was pretty neat, and the fact that they were 400 years in Egypt at this time, and we're 400 years in America at this time, and I know that don't correlate to the rest of the world that might be listening, but for us Americans, that's kind of a pretty big deal for us to have 
had different types of governments established along the way, but to have been here pretty independent for 400 years. And so if you continue reading, another significant point of this week for us as Christians is starting in verse 14 of that same passage. uh, It says, So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. For whoever eats living bread from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. What we're seeing is the establishment of the Passover. What we're seeing is the establishment of the Passover. (laughs) And what... (laughs) Okay, just so that you understand... I asked our youngest daughter what leaven was, and now you see the, that it's laughter. So our house is full of laughter, even during this pandemic. But I did ask our youngest what leavened bread was, because I'm reading a different version of the Bible, and so mine actually didn't say leaven. It said something else. So I was seeing if she actually was paying attention. So what is what is leaven? Yeast. Right, yeast. I didn't say laughter, mommy. No, oh, we wasn't saying laughter, but Daddy laughed at us because we did. were whispering. I did. They caught me off guard. They were whispering. <laughs> <laughs> but she's absolutely right. For those who don't know, leaven bread is bread that has yeast in it. And so since the Israelites, the Hebrew people, wouldn't have time to prepare leavened bread before the Exodus, God instructed them to make unleavened bread. It's much like a flatbread or a cracker or something along that lines. We might equate it to a tortilla at this time. And so they wouldn't have time to let the yeast rise or anything like that. So it was important that they had unleavened bread so they're not waiting on anything. They're moving when God says move. And that's important for us also is that when God says move, we should be ready to move. But we see that this is the establishment of the Passover. And in this, we also see some nearly 2,500 years later, probably, the establishment of communion, the Lord's Supper. And so that brings us to our next part of the message, which we'll find in Luke chapter 22 and we'll start in verse 19 but before we get there a little bit of the backstory of what's going on is of course they're observing Passover it's Jesus and his disciples and some of the other people that were with them are observing Passover and part of Passover is the eating of the unleavened bread and the Seder meal and everything that's going on right there and Jesus makes a new covenant with his people at this point. And it says he, um, if we back up to verse 17, it says, Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. And so he's preparing for what's about to happen. But he also lets them know for in verse 18, For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So he's telling them that this is the last time he's going to enjoy this meal with them until the kingdom of God comes. And so that's a very important note. This is why we refer to it as the Last Supper. For Jesus here on earth, it was his Last Supper. He knew that his time had come and that the reason he had come for the death, for the sacrifice that was to be made for us, so that his blood could be spilled and cover our lives to give us the protection. It was about to happen. And in verse 19, it says, He took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. 
But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on this table, and truly the Son of Man goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is, be he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. So there's a lot of things going on right here, but the important part about what we call communion, the Holy Sacrament, Last Supper, what we, the important parts about it is that he took the unleavened bread that was common at the Seder meal and he broke it to represent his broken body that they would witness there in the crucifixion. And he said, do this in remembrance of me, that my body was broken for you. And then he takes the cup that has the wine in it and that he has asked them to divide amongst themselves. And he gives thanks and drinks from it and says, do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood that was shed for you. And although they may not know what all's going on or understand what it means at that point we can now look back and see what it really does mean for each of us right and so it's important that we take a little bit of time and some people do it more often than others but it's important that we do take some time and we remember Christ this way and so what's sitting in front of me right now is actually a piece of matzo style cracker bread whatever it's made by a company in Israel I'm so thankful that they made this because of our health conditions that we have to have gluten free stuff and I'm thankful that they make this um, so we have our matzo style bread that's in front of us and we have a bottle of sparkling red grape juice that's actually made from grape juice since we have young ones, so we don't use alcoholic wine. <laughs> but if that's what you have, that's perfectly fine. It just actually needs to be something from the vine. Grapes, cranberries, strawberries even. Something that grows on the vine. So that's very important. And, and any cracker or and, tortilla. Yeah, any cracker, any tortilla. It doesn't have to be matzo style. We actually like them because they really do taste good. They have honey in them, so they're sweet and they taste yummy. Lily's over here been trying to nibble on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then other fruits, if you are Jewish and follow their traditions and they are Passover, um, and so they're not approved for the Seder meal, though. Right. But they are okay, and we're going to use them today. And so, <laughs> they're, they're laughing at me because I went to pick up the cracker and it broke. But we're going to break the bread. And I will divide it between us four. Sorry. And we do this in remembrance of Christ. Yes, uh, Carissa is reminding me, before you ever take communion, and there is scripture, I can't remember exactly where right now, Paul writes about it in one of his letters, before you ever take communion, make sure your heart is in the right place. Take time, pray, fast if you need to, and make sure that your heart and your mind are focused on Christ at this time. And that's very important because you need to recognize who it is that you're taking this communion for and that it's not for yourself or for any other idolatrous thing, your electronics, any of that. You need to be focused and mindset on Christ at this time and that's very important and we do take that very seriously. And sometimes God tells you just not to participate in it. That sometimes you need to fast from even the Lord's Supper. That's that right. There's something going on that he's preparing you for, and it's just not the right time. Even though as Christians in our area, traditionally this is when we would do the Lord's Supper, either last Sunday or sometime during this previous week or today. That's right. So when we do get out of this situation and we're all enjoying fellowship again, and the next time you take communion as a group at the church, if you feel God's called you not to participate, 
it's okay to pass on it and sit there quietly while everybody else does it, and that's fine. We've done it before. And yes, you will get some funny looks, but it's okay. We yeah. were going through some pretty tough times, yeah. and we were doing a lot of prayer and fasting ourselves, so it wasn't the right time for us. But you know what? When it was the right time, we were able to do it ourselves at home also. And God wants you to do it when it's right for you. When you have a clear mind, a clear conscience, a clear heart to focus on Him because it's that important. It shouldn't be taken lightly. And so it's important to make sure that your heart and mind's clear before you take of it. So if you're, you're in a bad spot and you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. And you can always come back and do it again some other time. And we're doing things a little differently. We've always allowed our kids to participate at a young age, where some churches or some families don't agree with that. Yeah. Why? Um, some people believe there's an age of accountability, and I've always felt that this is important for you to understand. And so we've stressed from a very beginning that this is important and we do it in remembrance of Christ and sometimes even when you were too little to even understand it it's the act of of still doing it in obedience and that's important too it's obedience and so as parents and we both felt that it was a call we both agreed to that it was okay for y'all to do it sometimes I skip communion so that you participated in communion so I was doing communion with you, but you were the one that actually took communion. And it was because you felt like you wanted to. And so instead of me taking it and you taking it, I took it as a way of showing my faith that I agreed with you that you should take it. So there's been many times I've taken communion. I guess you could say through the girls. Yeah. Because y'all were little enough that it really wasn't socially acceptable acceptable for us to do this. But <clears throat> we should have did things a little differently. Yeah. We've actually gotten funny looks because one church actually did use alcoholic wine. And Carissa handed it over to Addison. And Addison obviously is a minor. <laughs> but it's just, I mean, it was just a little, little bitty shot. So, I mean, it wouldn't really hurt nothing. It's like less than one ounce of wine there. And... Some people looked at her funny and it's like, oh, you know, do you need another one? And Chris is like, no, I'm going to allow her to take it this time. And, and some of it too is, um, I don't know how well you've talked about our relationship or us having children, um, but our children are very um, blessed with that we really do see them as a blessing to from God, especially our oldest. Um, but there are some consistent health issues that I have due to Addison being one. And I've chosen, um, very rarely did I drink anything alcoholic. And a lot of it had deals with having Addison mm -hmm. so early. And even that little bit probably wouldn't have hurt me. But there have been times that just my body doesn't function very well with alcohol. And she wanted to. And so... It was something I could get in touch with and had. She didn't like it. <laughs> so she learned her lesson. And <laughs> but that is, we, we have all ways that the girls can, can do communion. Yeah. There are some denominations, I guess, would, would frown upon it. Yeah. And some wait until they're of a certain age and... Some say that it has to be completely their choice, and we do agree that it needs to be their choice. Uh, but even at an early age, both girls have always asked, "Is it okay if we take, you know, if we do this also?" Absolutely, if they feel comfortable doing it, that's fine. Um, I think that Addison is at a very, at a very uniquely young age, yeah. and a lot of it, I think, does believe in in how she was born and, and the fact that we were very adamant that she's only here by God's grace, by his mercy. 
And so she has a different relationship than even I do, who is saved at a young age and grew up in the church. Yeah. Um, and so it was, when you have a little one, it looks different. And so getting back to this, if y'all are ready, um, we take the bread and we've broken it amongst each other. We ask, Lord, bless this bread in remembrance of the sacrifice that you made for us. Um, allow us to take it as if we're taking you on ourselves also and give us that blessing, Lord. We do this in remembrance of the body that was broken for us so that our sins would be paid for. Yummy! <laughs> and then, of course, we have the juice. Um, some people use wine. Some people just use juice. Either is fine. And we have the sparkling grape juice. We really like it. And so we use it. And we ask that God bless this for our bodies and for our hearts and minds and souls so that we can remember the blood that Christ spilt for us so that we could be saved by His grace and enter into His kingdom. So, we have participated in communion, and we've shared a short Easter message about the first Passover and what it meant to be covered under the blood so that the angel of death wouldn't take those that were covered, much like we're covered under the blood of Christ now through his salvation that was shed on the cross given a promise of resurrection as he was this Easter morning so that the death from sins won't take us and we shall live together eternally in glory with him because of that salvation. We've taken communion and blessed the broken bread and the spilt wine for him in remembrance of what he done for us. Is there anything that y'all would like to add or say? What's the greatest thing about this morning? The tomb is empty. That's right. The tomb is empty. Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. May you all enjoy what today is about. It's family, but it's the gift that God gives us, that empty tomb, that sacrifice. And we know that this Easter is a little different. But it should be. It should be. Every Easter should be different. This is just God's way of telling us to get back. Yep. Back to Him. It may be different, but we just have to change our perspective not about all the ceremony and traditions it's it's about him and he made it simpler for us this year so i hope y'all enjoy that and i hope you enjoy this message take time to enjoy your family and the time you have with them and we hope to share a message with you again soon thank you for joining our family definitely <laughs> All right, love you guys. Have a good one. If you've enjoyed this content, please visit my website, www.brotherjamesparty.com, to view and listen to more content that I've been able to put out. You can also subscribe to the website there and receive updates as new material comes out. And also, you can either go to patreon.com 
slash Brother James Pardee, or you can click the Patreon button at the bottom of the welcome page, and you would be helping me out into bringing you further, better, more in-depth content. I would greatly appreciate it. Love you guys. Thanks so much.